Welcome to God's Five Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson. Reach him at God's Five Minutes at gmail.com. Now, here's Ed Wilson with God's Five Minutes. Hello, friends. John wrote in the seventh chapter of Revelations, After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. And one of the elders answered and said unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. These verses contain a description of the Lord's own church, the ransom from all the ages, as well as the conditions that have enabled them to be included in that number. The expression that she is made up of a multitude which no person can number, while certainly speaking to the many who have found eternal life since Jesus walked Galilee's shores, is surely also a reference to the fact that only Jesus fully knows the heart of every living soul, and he exercises the right of determination as to who shall abide in his tabernacle. God's church is a tabernacle which the Lord pitched, and not man. No man can invent the laws of who can be one of his children redeemed, and no man can possibly have the understanding of the human heart or of how God has dealt with each of us. Thus, no man can number the church of God. This Bible teaching also means that the gospel is to every living soul, national origin, family background, race, gender, the same Lord who created each of us as we are and places us in his world as he is pleased to do, purchased a salvation that reaches indiscriminately to every human need. The scripture reinforces the Bible doctrine that we shall each stand before the judgment seat of God to give an account of deeds done in the flesh, while also making the point that the grace of God has been sufficient for whosoever will, so that none of us shall have excuse at that final judgment. So here, gathered together beneath the prophet's pen, are all those who have faithfully served and suffered for the Lord Jesus Christ. In that stupendous setting, a question is asked by one of the elders, not for his own information, but for John's instruction. For the lowest saint in heaven knows more than the greatest apostle in the world. The question has two parts. What are these that are in white robes? And from where have they come? The question seems to be an admiring one. The true path of living a worthwhile life in this world lies straight through the gospel. The question amounts to an admonition to John. It is saying, see how these diverse and distressed saints have had their sins thoroughly forgiven and have maintained spiritual purity even though vexed with great tribulation? The same grace that sustained and will sustain them is available to you. In just this way, the holy testimony of his own elect who finished their course with victory is a bright, shining example to we who follow, and the ongoing testimonies of their living brethren inspire us every time we hear them. John, speaking in the Spirit, did not answer the question, but turned it back to the elder who had approached him, Thou knowest. It was as if he said, Yes, I understand something of grace. I was schooled to my Christian life by Jesus Christ himself. I have lived and taught as he did fifty years. I am today enduring persecution by being exiled to this lonely island where I now live. But I count not myself to have apprehended. I must press toward the mark for the prize. These you have shown me have won their crown. It is for you, O elder, to speak and for me to listen. And then we have the grand pronouncement of the heavenly messenger. These are they who have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The truth is, from Genesis to Revelation, the whole Bible is one long exposition against sin, the very essence of Jesus' burden to come to this world and suffer and die was to make a means whereby we may have our sins forgiven and fulfill the command he gave in the temple to the woman taken in adultery, go and sin no more. God hates sin. God caused the ultimate sacrifice to be made to deliver from sin. He wants you and me to live free from sin. Have you talked to him today? You have been listening to God's Five Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson. Reach him by email at g-o-d-s-f-i-v-e minutes at gmail.com. Tune in next time to hear more encouraging thoughts from God's Word on God's Five Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson.